All right, now after that story, let us get to our conversation of the day where we are joined by Evelyn Mwendo uh, via virtual means, um, who is from Tax Justice Network, just not from Tax Justice Network Africa. Thank you so much, Evelyn, for joining us. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so let's get right into the conversation and look at education financing. When it comes to financing education, especially in Africa, we have seen very many um, strategies come in, innovative financing, external grants, and also public resources. Now, when we look at financing in Africa, what does it entail when it comes to education? Well, I'll start with... Um that 2024 is actually the year of education, as some of us activists within the space are calling it, in which we hope to finally meet the financing gap of education in Africa. So the ideal is that African countries should be spending either 20% of their national budget on education, or should be spending at least 6% of their total GDP on education. And um, in Kenya, when we look at the situation, we've been cutting around that percentage. Um, we've been spending around 19% of the total public expenditure on education. So there's quite some work for us to do um, nationally. The way you've um, explained about Kenya, where we have 19%. Now, for us to even increase uh, the percentage uh, of this to either 25%, what is it that needs to be done? When you look at uh, the situation in schools and also the kind of um, uh, infrastructure that needs to uh, be put in place, what is it that we need to do in order for us to at least even move the uh, percentage up? So the three main issues um, when it comes to increasing financing for education that us within the tax justice space are calling for. So the first thing is we need to increase the amount of revenue that we're collecting, but this needs to happen in an equitable manner. Mm -hmm. And also we need to increase the share that education has in that national cake that we can meet the financing needs of education in this country. So the first thing is we need to increase the revenue that we're collecting from taxes because taxes have actually been amongst all the three sources of revenue that you mentioned earlier on, whether it's private investment, whether it's out-of-pocket payments from households or um, tax revenue, tax has been the most sustainable way of financing education. The other thing that needs to happen is we need to deal with our debt situation. When you look at the past five years, you'll notice that in certain instances, Kenya is spending more on debt servicing, on paying debt, than it is in certain instances of education in the country. So by addressing some of the serious governance as well as structural issues, both locally and internationally with regard to debt, then we can increase the amount of revenue that is going towards um, education. Because for instance, in 2022, according to the debt justice um, report, Kenya spent around 24.3% of its total revenue on servicing debt, external debt to be exact. So that's a bit of a red flag. The other thing is that because Kenya is in, according to the IMF, at high risk of being in debt distress, we need to ensure that whatever fiscal consolidation measures are being introduced in order to address the debt situation do not adversely affect education financing in Kenya. As we've seen um, in previous instances, some of these measures to address debt for instance, structural adjustment programs in the past have actually led to more and more underspending within the education sector, as well as other socioeconomic 
So, uh, Evelyn, uh, we need to uh, just go to one more story and then we'll come back to you. So, we're going to look at the story on land use in Narok.